Well, I first arrived here in 1944. This was fresh and new, and it had beautiful pastel colors. I might say that I, I didn't even know what a pastel color was, and everything was white and green and pink and blue. One thing I remember so clearly were circles. I never saw any circles in my hometown or in the city of New York. I went into business with my father, and what we were doing is building as general contractors up and down Miami Beach. Miami Beach became a prolific generator of hotels. Every year, at least one major hotel opened up. A significant event was the change of Collins Avenue. 1945, there was a whole series of major mansions, it was one after another. Beautiful old houses, but these were big and, and elaborate houses. That created these enormous oceanfront sites, and along there came the Fontainebleau, the Eden Rock, and the Doral. Then after that, you saw a whole string of condominiums go in. And the next hotel that was built in that row is the Playboy Hotel. It was a boom here in the 50s in condominiums along Collins Avenue and facing the water. Morris Lapidus was a highly respected architect, and he designed the Sanssouci and the Saxony Hotel. But they were very ordinary structures, but they were the first luxury hotels built on Miami Beach post-war. The Fontainebleau has lots of money to work with, and that was different. It was really unique at that moment on Miami Beach. Novak built something that was absolutely magnificent. The building was curved, the views were spectacular, no matter where you were in that building and the public areas were just beautiful. The interior of the lobby with the grand staircase, it doesn't really go to anything that's that critical, but it's beautiful. And the two-tiered lobby was really beautiful. People came to Miami Beach to spend their money in hotels and restaurants and nightclubs, and to gamble. Gambling was not legal, but every hotel that I can remember on Miami Beach had its bookmaker. Its bookmakers generally were located in a cabana. That was the afternoon place when horse racing was taking place uh, for people to sit around their cabana with racing forms that were sold in every hotel newsroom. People just sitting there reading their racing form, sitting in their own cabana reading a racing form, sitting on a beach chair or what have you, and the guy would come by like, uh, like the waiter did and see if we wanted any drinks. There was very little interference from anybody. I don't remember bookmakers down here getting in any trouble whatsoever at any time. But there was a tremendous economic force for gambling. People wanted it at that time. 1945 to 1955 was the heyday of the nightclubs. Three major nightclubs that were very, very prominent and active. The Latin Quarter, the Copa, and the Beachcomber. What made these clubs so important is they played all the major acts and all the famous name entertainers of the era. I'm talking about Jimmy Durante, Sophie Tucker, Sammy Davis Jr., Frank Sinatra. That was Miami Beach. And those clubs did huge amounts of business. The hotels, many of them, started booking primary acts and secondary acts. So guests of the hotel could see those acts in the hotel. So they drew people in from outside to see shows. And the result of that was nightclubs ceased. 